Um, past few days have been challenging, as you might imagine. It was uh, very difficult to terminate Steve Sarkeesian, someone who I sincerely like as a person, as a coach. I've known Steve for a long time. It's also been very difficult for our players, as you might imagine, and coaches to go through this, but I'm really proud of the way they handled it. Uh, when I talked to them on Sunday and then early this morning as well. On Sunday, uh, as you know, I learned that Steve was not at practice, so I called him. And as I said to some of you later that morning, uh, I talked to him and determined that he was, he was not healthy. An hour later, I announced Steve was taken an uh, indefinite leave of absence. Over the next 24 hours, uh, I was able to look further into the situation, gather facts, and determine that Steve's conduct did not meet USC standards and expectations of a head coach. He knew those expectations and failed to meet them. So we made a decision in the best interest of our student athletes, and that was to terminate Steve. I'm not going to get into any further details of the termination process or any specific things about his contract. Now, I know some in this room and outside this room felt we should have been suspended or fired him after the incident in August uh, at the Salute of Troy event. I felt at that time it was in the best interest of our players who had been through an incredible amount of adversity during these sanctions and the coaching changes they've gone through and of Steve not to suspend or fire him. At that time, based, it on, the, based on the input of trusted medical professionals and staff, it was determined that he, cannot, he, could, he could continue coaching while seeking treatment. I felt a great deal of compassion for Steve Sarkeesian. He deserved another chance, and that's what I gave him. After the Salute to Troy event, as I told you then, I had a private, detailed, and serious conversation with Steve and laid out our expectations for his behavior. He has violated those agreed upon expectations and the conduct expected of all of our USC coaches. As for media reports of other incidents involving Steve while at USC, any credible report that came to me, I thoroughly investigated. Credible report. For example, when a report of alcohol in the coaches' locker rooms after games was brought to me, I immediately banned it prior to the season. I also know there have been media reports of incidents involving Steve while he was at the University of Washington. In our hiring process, you, we used a respected national search firm that screened all our candidates, including Steve. Also, Steve had both NCAA and USC background checks done. And we talked to dozens of people, including head coaches, staff members, friends, and people who knew Steve well for many years, sometimes decades, and including uh, some from his previous tenures here at USC. None raised a concern. Further, Steve was never disciplined while at the University of Washington. And remember, Steve has been at USC now for a year and a half before the salute to Troy without incident. At the time of Steve's hire, I firmly believed he was the right choice and fit for USC. As we sit here today, October 13th, the decision I made didn't work out, and I own that. I own it. Once we made our decision to terminate Steve on Monday, I spent several hours reaching out to him without success. I also reached out to his agent many times. Finally, I did speak to him and with, I tried to reach out to several family members. I did speak to one other family member as well. And when I could not reach Steve personally, 
I sent a termination letter to him and his agent immediately because a decision had been made. I really do look forward to talking to Steve at some point. I really do. Steve Sarkeesian is a good person. As I said, I've known him a long time. And I know he's a good football coach. I wouldn't have hired him otherwise. I wish him the absolute best. He has my support, our support. We remain concerned for him and hope he focuses on his health and his well-being. You just, talk, you just heard from Coach Helton, but Coach Helton has been through this before at USC, as he mentioned. I have great confidence in the ability of Clay and his assistant coaches to rally around this team. Really impressed by the reception as he talked about the standing ovation he got when I introduced him yesterday and again this morning. Clay and his staff are very, very capable. I'm, I'm an old guy, been around football a long time, been around a lot of football staffs. This is a very, very capable football staff and it's a great opportunity for them. Going forward, when it comes to our coaching search, I won't talk about can candidates or a timetable. We have a big game this week, and our coaches are focused on it. I was lucky to play in three of these games. And this team knows there's still a lot in front of them. Uh, they've seen what we've done in the past under adversity when we come together and we can get on an epic run. I love USC. Yeah, many of you know me. I, I obviously went to school here, met my wife here uh, 39 years. My kids went to school here. My best friends are from USC. I love the place. This job means a lot to me. We've had a lot of good things happen here during the last five years. Uh, I know there's lots of people in this room and outside the room questioning my leadership at USC, but I'm very proud of the record over the last five years. First, we have successfully navigated severe NCA sanctions. Secondly, despite those sanctions, over the last five years, only two schools in the Pac-12 have won more football games than we have. Three, we've won 10 national championships over the last five years. Only the University of Florida has won more with 11. Fourth, which I'm very, very proud of, our academics are at an all-time high. We just had the best academic semester in the history of USC athletics. It's 127 years. That's a lot of semesters. Take 127, multiply by two. Fifth, we've had a record-breaking fundraising over the last five years, over $300 million. And we've taken our facilities from some of the worst in the country to among the best. I will continue to work very, very hard to get this right with football, and I believe, Pat Hayden believes, our future is bright. I know you have some questions. I'm happy to answer a few of them the best I can, but as I said, I can't get into personnel or contract details, so I'm calling on Helen Thomas. Helen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the oldest reporter in the room. Okay. Here. Oh, it, it was terribly disappointing to talk to, and I still hope to get a chance to talk to Steve. And I, and I, I spent two hours trying to get a hold of him. I called him, I texted him, I called three different numbers of his agent, I called his sister, I uh, finally got a hold of his brother-in-law. But, but it is disappointing. Yeah, I don't want to deliver this, you know, uh, in any other way but to talk to him. But a decision had to be made, and I had to get it out there. And so I, I tried, and as I said, if he's willing to meet with me, I certainly would be willing to meet with Steve. As I said, I've known him for a long time. I really respect him. He's going through a tough time. I support him. Yes, sir. Well, uh, again, we have a protocol of doing our background searches, which we follow. We actually do a little bit more in athletics. We don't do a public record search. The university doesn't do public record searches. And as I said, we've known, uh, we've known people that have known him for years and years, never raised as an issue. Uh, if those, I assume, if they were under public records discovered, I assume those were endorsed on a university credit card and approved by their athletic department. Now, again, 
I, I think a lot of people use alcohol, but when you talk about alcohol as a, uh, an issue, that is an assumption that you're making, and I'm not going to go there and talk about any HR, HR issues. Okay. No, it is accurate. He was vetted. You can disagree with the vetting, but he was vetted. Next question. Yes, sir. Did I ever question? My, my wife did. My, my, my wife is having a difficult time. I'll, I'll say that. Um, no, I mean, you know what? Uh, I know who I am. At the age of 62, I know what I stand for. I know what I've been asked to do when I was hired by President Nikias, and I think I've delivered some pretty good results. Have we gotten everything right? Clearly no. There are going to be 20 head coaches fired at some point this year in college football, maybe more, 20 or 30. This happens, okay? This happens. And I said I own it, right? And, you know, the idea is to do it better next time. Get it right next time, and we'll try. We'll do our absolute best. Uh, and, and, you know, again, we don't, we, we sit in rooms and we make decisions on coaches, and we've done it 10 or 11 times now, I think, Steve, uh, over the last five years. <clears throat> and, you know, you, you, you get them right, but a lot, a lot, of, a lot of times, don't. No, this is an inexact science choosing high profile football coaches or basketball coaches. It's inexact. And a lot of people get it wrong. I'm just not, not an excuse. You know, I said, I, I already told you I owned it. But, you know, again, it's going to happen 20, 25 times at the end of this year. Um, a guy that can win every single game every year by 37 points. But, but as far as That's what everybody wants. <laughs> as far as character issues and stuff like that, is that more than a desire? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, again, we want, we want a, you know, a, a guy who can embrace trying to win Pac-12 championships and national championships, going to continue the elevation of our academic programs, is going to play by the rules, and is going to be embraced by the Trojan family. Thank you. Thank you very much.